was found on local beaches. Coombs had already spent more than 20 years in prison for two other murders. In sentencing, Justice Geoffrey Nettle told Coombs he displayed a frightening predilection for homicide and a depraved humanity. He told the 57-year-old his was an exceptional case and believed he would murder again if released. Coombs was jailed for life with no parole. Peter Carline, ABC News, Melbourne. Speaking outside court, Ms Bett's mother, Sandra Bett, said her daughter's killer should never have had a chance to kill again. She said Coombs is a manipulator and a liar. No matter how many times a lie is stated, it does not become the truth. I am now stating the truth to put to rest the lies he has told. May he never be released and never have a chance to harm another being, human or animal. The second man charged with the murders of two men in the shooting in Brunswick last week has appeared in court. Phoebe Stewart reports. Carla Mustafa is charged with murdering 34-year-old Omar Taha and 23-year-old Ahmed Mohammed at a panel beating shop in Florence Street. 20-year-old Mustafa appeared in the Melbourne Magistrates Court flanked by two custody officers. He didn't apply for bail, but the court was told that police had warned custody officers there are concerns for Mustafa's safety while he's on remand. He was here in court again in December. His co-accused, Ali Kassar, was also charged with two counts of murder after being discharged from hospital where he had been treated for a gunshot wound. He's also been remanded to appear in December. TV Stewart, ABC News, Melbourne Magistrates Court. Prime Minister Julia Gillard says there was nothing improper about her office trying to get information on an investigation into the Health Services Union. Penny Morgan reports from Parliament House. The Prime Minister has confirmed that in 2009 her office contacted the Industrial Registrar to check if he was investigating Labor MP Craig Thompson's former union. Julia Gillard says there's nothing unusual about the contact. For a chief of staff to check a fact with a public servant is an unremarkable event. But the opposition leader, Tony Abbott, has told Channel 9 it raises questions about Ms Gillard's conduct. Now that it's confirmed uh, that she was monitoring the situation well before the public knew about it, I think she should come clean. Mr Thompson denies allegations he misused union funds while serving as the Health Services Union's National Secretary. Danny Morgan, ABC News, Canberra. The man had lost his family in this week's horrific house fire south of Brisbane. He's spoken about the tragedy at an emotional media conference. Emma Pollard reports. About 30 members of the devastated Lali family filed into their local church carrying large photos of their lost loved ones. Jeremiah Lali's wife, three sons and two daughters were among the 11 people who perished. He says he tried his best to save the lives of his beloved wife and children, but the smoke was too thick. Family member Betsy Neal says their grief will continue with each lost milestone, such as birthdays, weddings and other family celebrations. She says it's impossible to express the family's heartbreak. Family, friends and colleagues of the late ABC journalist Paul Lockyer have come together in Sydney's north to remember his life. Matthew Lane is there. There's not enough room in the church at St Ignatius College Riverview to seat the hundreds of people who have come to farewell veteran journalist Paul Lockyer. His sons Jamie and Nick have delivered the eulogy. They spoke of a loving husband and father with a passion for backyard cricket and the bush. After beginning his career as a cadet in Perth in 1969, Lockyer reported from Jakarta, Bangkok and Washington. Recently, he was the first to report from Grantham after it was devastated by the Queensland floods. He was well known for telling the stories of regional and rural Australia. Lockyer died in a helicopter crash in South Australia last week, along with ABC helicopter pilot Gary Ticehurst and ABC cameraman John Bean. The besieged Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi called for his supporters to march towards Tripoli to rid the capital of enemy rats. The rebels control most parts of the capital. There's been continued battle. The BBC Samuel Sanford has more. We watched as smoke rose over one Tripoli neighbourhood not far from the city centre and street fighting with small and heavy weapons continued on the ground. At the main hospital, new patients with gunshot wounds were arriving every few minutes. But much of the city is quieter now and firmly in the hands of those opposed to Colonel Gaddafi. He records another order.